Morning. I'm Stephen Davies from the Terrier team at CSIRO's Data 61. So what's CSIRO? Uh, CSIRO is Australia's National Science Research Agency. Uh, and over the last 100 years or so of its operation, uh, it's been responsible for uh, many global innovations, and a few of them are listed, such as um, dealing with signal rever reverberation off walls to allow for high-speed indoor Wi-Fi, um, polymer or plastic banknotes, and insect um, repellent called AeroGuard. So what's CesiumJS? Uh, CesiumJS is an open source JavaScript library for world-class 3D globes and maps. Our mission is to create the leading 3D globe and map for static and time dynamic content with the best possible performance, precision, visual qu quality, platform support, community and ease of use. And that's taken from the CesiumJS website. Uh, here's a, an example of Cesium being used to render the New York, New York skyline from OpenStreetMap data using 3D tiles. TerioJS is a library for building rich, web-based geospatial data explorers. It's fully open source and built on top of Cesium and Leaflet for mapping, D3 for charting, and React for the user interface. So why should you use TerioJS? The TerioJS library includes many features out of the box, including a data catalog UI for listing, viewing, metadata, previewing, and adding data sets to the map, a workbench to show legends prominently beside the map, wide format support for raster layers from expert geographic information systems, uh, such as ArcGIS Server, WMS, WMTS, TMS, OpenStreetMap, and more. And vector layers too, from KML, GeoJSON, ArcGIS Server, WFS, and more. Another feature is region mapping, which makes it easy to create visualizations from Excel spreadsheets, where a column indicates region data, such as a local government area or a postcode. <coughs> time series charts let us see how things change with time, such as the power generation at two power stations, shown here over the last seven days. It also has great support for 3D terrain, models derived from aerial phot photography and photogrammetry, point clouds, and more. And it has a mobile interface designed to make Terrier work well on mobile phones and tablets. It has a split screen view which lets you visually compare different data sets at different times. Here we're looking at an area west of Melbourne in November 1999 on the left and a year ago on the right. It also includes a story builder that allows you to capture scenes involving data sets, feature info, graphs and or the splitter and add a short title, description and pictures to each. You can then share this story with others. It also includes the ability for users to add their own data to the map, um, either from locally via file or via a web service. <coughs> and a 2D leaflet fallback for browsers unable to run WebGL fast enough for Cesium with wide format support. And here are some extra reasons. Uh, it has a cute map loading GIF um, on startup. Uh, it pauses the Cesium render loop when no changes to data occur. Uh, which is especially useful on mobile devices for conserving battery. Um, it loads cesium in a few JS chunks um, as needed for functionality. Uh, it's super easy to create your own map. and You should be able to create one within about 30 minutes with your own catalog. Uh, the UI is optional. You can use all of it, parts of it, or none. And uh, there's a solid community. You can chat to us on our Gitter chat and we'll get back or other people in our community using the open source library will get back to you to help. Or there's also a Google Groups or an email address. Architecturally, it looks a bit like this. It's very heavily front-end, allowing for visualization of most supported user-supplied data without sending anything outside the browser. And you can even run TerryJS without the TerryJS server part. You just won't be able to view uh, data sets that don't have cores enabled. Um, you won't be able to uh, view things like shapefiles 
which there's a conversion service to convert them to GeoJSON, and you won't be able to share things. Uh, since National Map, which was the first um, map we built with TerryJS, there have been more than 20 applications built by both our team at Data61 and others. TerryJS has enabled each of these agencies to create the, curate the combination of data and functionalities they need to support their users. Uh, and on the left is a list of ones that we've made, uh, non-full, uh, and on the right, a list of ones that other people have made using the open source software. I was planning on giving a live demo of New South Wales Digital Twin, but as it's still a proof of concept, there hasn't been much work done on UX over a slower connection. But here's a screenshot where you can see the proposed and current 3D strata plans uh, in the city of Penrith with models of trees and some underground visualisation where the ter terrain has been peeled back uh, on the right to see underground car parks and pipes. And uh, I have a short demo... Um, using central images to tell a story, uh, using story mode. And it's based on WMS uh, services created by uh, the Open Data Cube. There's the cute GIF spinner. Oh, uh, this isn't on. If it loads. Maybe I'll come back to that. <laughs> oh, there it comes. Right, so I've made a quick story of um, using some central imagery about uh, some flooding in Queensland in early March 2018 when it loads. Uh, looks like it's not working very well. I shall continue. <laughs> As is the problem with live demos. Yeah, all the features for uh, TerryJS and ways to contact us and other information is available at terrier.io. And all of our code is um, in the TerryJS uh, organization, and most of it in the TerryJS uh, repo. Uh, you can contact us on our Gitter chat, and we'll usually reply, or someone from the community, uh, pretty quickly. And our roadmap. Um, where is TerryJS going? Uh, currently, we are refactoring a large part of the code base. Um, we've been publishing applications for about five years, and uh, the age of our model layer is beginning to show. Uh, so we're refactoring a large part of the model layer um, so that we can add more capabilities in the future. Uh, 
Uh, but we're very soon releasing a prototype map powered by the refactored code to some clients. And uh, also we'll be adding authentication and role-based authorization to show different catalogs to different users. And other than that, we'll be creating more digital twins for other Australian states and possibly some customers, uh, some other customers in Asia and working towards an Australian national digital twin. This. <coughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's going to work. Oh, there we go. Does any, anyone have any questions while it loads? There's half of it. Alright, I'll start it from this one. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, how uh, hard uh, it is to strip the ReactJS UI and then use just uh, uh, the other parts? Um, including the server side for Uber to follow. Okay. Uh, well, the server side, you wouldn't have to change much on the server side. Uh, the server side just uh, serves JS files. Uh, JS bundle files and um, has a few services that the front end uses. Uh, there is uh, some logic in the UI, uh, but most of it's in the model layer. And so, just like all the buttons have a little bit of logic to call things within the model layer. So, you would have to re implement the whole UI uh, and all the functions, but yeah, it, it, it's doable. Uh, so, for example, um, in 2016, we uh, yeah 2016 we uh, we took out our knockout JS front end uh, um, UI and replaced it with React JS uh, without changing much of the model layer behind it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, probably, yeah, we'll, we'll be releasing an app in October, um, so full feature parity probably sometime the end of this year, between, between the new one and master. Yeah, so just repeating that, yeah, it is available, we're developing, developing it in the open on the MobX branch. Uh, all of our issues about building it are also just in GitHub, available to everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to work. 